the future, it's here. And it's looking pretty good. What's up guys, welcome back to Monster Review where we take a look at tech, tech tips, and make how-to videos. You remember that one scene in uh, the original Mission Impossible where Tom Cruise is shown the video glasses? That scene blew my nine-year-old mind. I knew it was just science fiction, but what if? And that's when I knew I was obsessed with tech. As a matter of fact, my favorite scene in all the 90s James Bond movie was when he's actually talking to Q. Anyway, bringing the conversation back to these glasses. These are Meta's second generation uh, video glasses. Their first one, they called them Ray-Ban Stories. With the second generation, they're calling it Meta Smart Glasses. Not sure why they decided to change the name. It actually caused some confusion for me because I was going to buy the Ray-Ban Stories, but decided not to because the video quality wasn't exactly what I was looking for. And uh, when I saw people talking about the Metasmart glasses earlier this year, late last year, I was like, well, why is everyone talking about the uh, Ray-Ban Stories again, right? These glasses are old, they're a year old. It wasn't until I dug deeper that I realized that no, these are the second generation glasses. From here on out, I'm going to refer to these as the second gen and the Ray-Ban Stories as the first gen. With the second gen, we get a substantial amount of upgrades. Number one being the camera. So on the second generation, we have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. On the first generation, we only had a five megapixel camera. On the second generation, we have 32 gigs of storage while on the first generation, we only had four gigs of storage. On the second generation, we have four hours of battery life, while on the first generation, we only have three hours of battery life. On the second generation, we have an image resolution of 3024 by 4032. On the first generation, we have an image resolution of 2592 by 1944. And for video on the second generation, we have a video resolution of 1440 by 1920 at 30 frames per second. While on the first generation, we only have 1184 by 1184 at 30 frames per second, which is essentially a box. On the second generation, we have the new Meta AI, while on the first generation, we have the Facebook Assistant. I tried really hard to say that with a straight face. Facebook Assistant, yes. What are some of the pros with these smart glasses? Well, number one, like I briefly touched on before, we get great image and video quality. I am really impressed with the video and image quality coming out of these glasses. It really is good enough for me to include it into my YouTube workflow and to use the video as like B-roll footage to incorporate them into my YouTube videos, despite the limitation of only recording videos up to a minute. Number two, this thing is easy to pair and set up on my phone. I just took it out the case. I downloaded the app on my phone, opened the app, went through the prompts and bada bing bada boom. It connected to my phone, no issues. Compare that to this Action 4, for some odd reason, it took about 20, 25 minutes to set up, mainly because my phone, the app, was not seeing the Action 4. Didn't have any of those issues when setting up the Meta Smart Glasses. Number three, lens customization. They offer you a lot of customization when it comes to the lens of these glasses. You can get just a clear, uh, non-prescription lens, or you can get a prescription lens. And with those two lenses, you can add on transition, or you can add on blue UV light, not both. If you do use a prescription lens, you have the option to add bifocals. Of course, the more you customize the lens, the higher the price goes. So um, just playing around with it, um, I added my prescription strength and like the total came up to like $600, $700. So it does really skyrocket the price of these glasses. This configuration, however, is just the clear non-prescription lens with transitions. And uh, the theory was like, you know, although I wear glasses, I decided not to use my prescription because it's always changing. And I didn't want to have to deal with getting these lens swapped out. So I decided to just go with the clear non-prescription lens and just wear contacts. Number four, ease of use. Man, these things are so easy to use. So let me put it on my head for demonstration here. So uh, right at the right side of the glasses on top here, we get one button. And if you quick press that button, it takes a photo. If you long press that button, it takes a video. And you can have that reverse if you want to long press to take a photo and short press to take a video. 
On the side right here, we have a touchpad. So tap once to play music, uh, tap and hold to launch Spotify or launch Meta AI. You can swipe forward to raise the volume, swipe backwards to lower the volume. You can double tap while playing music to skip ahead to the next track or triple tap to go to the previous track. Number five, AI assistance. At first I was like, you know what? This gotta be a gimmick. Everyone is trying to jump on the AI bandwagon and uh, no doubt this is probably just Facebook's attempt on trying to capitalize on their AI. But after using Meta AI on these glasses, I have to say that there is actually a use for it on these glasses. And um, it turned out to be a lot more useful than I thought. So yeah, I turned out liking the, uh, the AI assistance on the glasses way more than I thought I would. Number six, so the glasses works without the phone. You step outside, you forget your phone inside the house, you can still take photos and videos uh, even though your phone is not with you, the only thing you can't do is use the Meta AI assistance, which is not a big deal. Number eight, this thing is 50% louder than the first gen, and I can attest that it is indeed loud. I took it on a jog route that I have, and there's a lot of trucks riding up and down that road, and although they were making a lot of noise, while riding on that road, I was still able to hear my podcast with no issues, loud and clear. Number nine. So although these smart glasses are rated for only four hours of use, I was able to squeeze out six hours of battery life by just using it as like a normal person would. So not using it heavily for photos and videos and occasionally using it for the voice assistance and no Bluetooth playback. So not playing any Bluetooth music. And, and I think that's great battery life. Uh, despite being such a small product. So really happy with the battery life. Now, of course, the battery life is dependent on your usage. So if you're a heavy user and you take a lot of videos and photos and use assistance a lot, you're probably going to uh, get around that four hours, three hours of battery life that uh, Meta claims. Number 10, it only took 45 minutes to charge this from 3% to 100%. That's really fast despite being, you know, an accessory. Number 11, the fit is snug, but it's comfortable. So I have a normal prescription Wayfair right here, Ray-Ban. These are my reading glasses. And the problem with these is that if you look over here, right here where it sits on top of your ears, it's very thin. And so when I have it on, I can feel the weight of the glasses on the top of my ears. And after an hour, it actually starts to hurt. Although these are technically the same style glasses, if you look over here where it sits on top of your ears, this band is a lot thicker. And so what that does is it provides extra cushion on top of my ears. And so I can wear these glasses all day and they don't cause any pain whatsoever on the top of my ears like these glasses do. Just like my reading glasses, I can shake these around, go up and down, head bang, whatever, and they stay put on my face and don't move at all. Okay, so those are the pros. What are the cons? Number one, indoor photos are often blurry, even in well-lit indoor shots. Number two, indoor videos also suffer from the same, but it's a little different with video. With videos, you're not in a well-lit area and you're taking video, you get this fuzz effect. Um, however, me personally, I can deal with the fuzz effect. It's the blurry photos that I just cannot stand. Number three, adding transition lens is an extra hundred dollars, but particularly on Ray-Ban's site, um, they won't offer discounts on these glasses, but they do offer discounts on the configuration. And so um, at the time of writing the script for this video, they dropped the price for transitions down to $30, which brought up the total price of this glasses with non-prescription lens and the transition to $320 versus about $400, which is regular price for non-prescription transition lens. So if you have a particular configuration for these glasses that you wanna get, go ahead and play around with it. Every day check it to see if Ray-Ban is offering any discounts on those configurations themselves. Number four, sound quality is not great for music despite the ads that Ray-Ban has on their website. You got a girl who's dancing in the streets with these glasses and then if you scroll below that, you have a DJ who are using these glasses to mix some beats. No way, no way. These glasses do not sound that great. Okay, so I can understand a girl dancing on the street, but the DJ, come on now. No professional is going to use this to mix out beat. The sound quality for music on these things are not good. Is it clear? Yes. Is it immersive? Yes. Is it stereo? Of course. But there's no bass, like, at all. These cheap $7 earbuds, 
that I picked off of Timu, they actually sound better than these glasses. Number five. So of course, these do not provide any isolation, noise isolation. As you see, it's an open ear design. And so because of that, of course, you have to expect a lot of noise coming into your ears and disrupting you. So if you're a kind of person that needs that noise isolation to turn on beast mode while you're working out, it's going to be a lot harder for you to turn on beast mode with these glasses than let's say an AirPod or a Google Buds. Number six, this lens has a lot of glare. So if you use a non-prescription clear lens, they don't offer any anti-glare coating on them. What you end up getting is a glasses that produces a lot of glare. And if you're sensitive to light, that can cause a lot of headaches. Every prescription glass I get, I always get the anti-glare coating, but you can't add that to the non-prescription clear lens. You can only add it if you get the prescriptions lens on these glasses. Number seven, the case is bulky and it's not ideal for the pocket. So this is the case, as you can see, it's thick. And I can respect why they made this case so thick, right? Because it needs to be able to top off your smart glasses a couple times a day if it dies. I support it being thick. But just know that this is not something you can shove in your pocket. You can try, but your pocket is going to be super bulky. This is meant to like throw inside of your backpack or a pocketbook, something like that. For pockets, no. And then lastly, number eight, the website says these glasses are waterproof. But if you ask the Meta Assistant, it tells you that they aren't. I don't know what to make of that. I just thought it was weird, but I'm going to trust the Meta AI since it should know more about itself than the website. I have a lot of experience with customer service from different companies. And the first thing they tell you, even though the product is waterproof or water resistant, first thing they always tell you is that they will repair. But if they see any hint of water damage, they're sending it back to you. And there you go. That's the pros and cons of these glasses. What are my thoughts of these glasses? Well, I really appreciate what Meta and Ray-Ban are doing here. And I appreciate Meta and Ray-Ban's small step approach into creating these smart glasses. A couple years from now, we're going to get to a point they can put a transparent screen over here and uh, give you augmented reality. And it's going to take a while, right? Because, you know, we have to wait for the tech to come down in price in order for companies to pack all that tech into this device and keep the price relatively low. And yes, these glasses start at $299 and that's a little bit expensive. Uh, but, you know, this is the blueprint for uh, smart glasses in the future. And I think they are on a good path. I got invited through the MetaView app to test out the Meta Look and See. And I have to say, <laughs> if this is what the future holds for us, that's, it's pretty exciting. I was impressed with how accurate the look and see was. So I went around the house, went around outside. I asked uh, Meta to identify 14 stuff. Hey Meta, look and tell me what this is. This appears to be a virtual reality headset. This appears to be a small, black, handheld device with buttons and an LCD screen. It could potentially be a remote control or some other type of electronic device. This appears to be a smartphone, possibly an Oppo device due to the distinctive camera design on the back. This appears to be a remote control for a television or streaming device. This appears to be a camera with an attached lens and additional accessories, such as a grip or tripod mount. This appears to be a robot vacuum cleaner, possibly an iRobot Roomba. This appears to be a silver Ford Explorer SUV. This appears to be a coffee machine, specifically a Philips brand espresso maker. The cat in the image appears to be a calico cat, which is a coat pattern that features a mix of white, black, and orange fur. It's difficult to determine the specific breed without more information or a clearer view of the cat's face and body. Here's a possible translation of the sign into Spanish. Estación de la Guardia Desperdicios de la Guarperos. Por favor, limpieza después de tu perro. This translates to dog waste station please clean up after your dog so yeah you know there are some errors with it but come on this is a feature that's in beta and it's working pretty darn good the only issue i had was after a while meta ai just died and it stopped waking up when i called on it i reset the app i reset the glasses nothing couldn't get it back on I actually had to factory reset the glasses to get it to work again but that's the price you pay for testing out a beta software so who are these glasses for well they're definitely for early adopters 
or people who are into videography and they want a unique perspective, right? Don't try to use these as a primary camera. There are severe limitations such as the low light performance and the one minute video cap. But as a B-roll camera, yeah, these things are awesome. Even as, you know, a camera to take shorts, like TikTok shorts, YouTube shorts, or whatnot, these glasses will also do really good with those. Just know if you're obsessed with these glasses only because of the camera, just remember there are better options out there. You can pick up the DJI Action 4 for $299, which is the same exact price as these glasses. And uh, of course, what you get is a better camera with better low light performance. You could change the frame rates. You can change the resolution. You can take photos. You can do so much more with these action cams. There's a whole list of third party accessories that so you can have it mounted to your chest. You can have it mounted to your hat if you wanted to. This chest mount right here costs $8 Amazon. And uh, with this chest strap, you can attach it to your chest and you can get awesome first person view videos. Here's a sample of the glasses versus the DJI Action 4. So here's an example of, you know, versatility when it comes to cameras. So with the Action 4, I can mount it on my windshield. I can hold it in my hand. I can mount it to my forehead. I can do a lot more with it. Uh, with this camera, with the Meta Smart Glasses, I pretty much, it has to sit on someone's face. Whether it's my face or someone else's face, it's got to be on someone's face in order for you to capture, you know, image and videos. I actually like the first person view on these glasses uh, more than the first person view I get on uh, the Action 4. Um, and then obviously the biggest downfall of these glasses is that after a minute they stop recording like just now where the Action 4 will continue to record until I hit that shutter button. But ultimately it really depends on you on what kind of video you're looking for, what kind of versatility you're looking for. Obviously you get much more with an action cam than you do with these glasses but I gotta say like you know just have a video camera on your face ready to go as long as you're wearing it is actually pretty darn cool. And of course, if you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the DJI Action 4, you could pick up these for $239 and do almost the same exact thing with the DJI Action 4. Now it is an older model to the Action 4, so the image quality and the video quality is gonna be better on this one. But uh, still, these are action cams that can take a beating, right? Because these glasses, they can't take a beating you're not going to want to beat the heck out of these glasses or use these glasses for like skateboarding uh, because if if you fall on these glasses they're going to break but these on the other hand man this thing is heavy these things are built to take a beating but to keep on ticking and then also you can use these as primary cameras where on the meta smart glass you cannot use it as a primary camera but if it's not the cameras you're after and you're just after some glasses that are smart then these are definitely it now i will say although on paper you know the action 4 and like the action 2 uh are better than these smart glasses for just looking at the camera these things provide a unique way of taking photos and videos very quickly so if you have it on your face if you wear glasses and you get these in prescription strength or you get them in sunglasses whichever you have them on your face, they're charged. Guess what? If you see a Kodak moment, one press, bam, that Kodak moment is yours. You see something happening in front of your eyes that's just unbelievable. Long press, take that video, bam, you got it caught. So like the chances of you missing out on a photo and video opportunity are so slim with these glasses. Unless they're dead, of course. And my wife, she's not a tech nerd, but she's just amazed with these glasses. Just because of that small little thing. She don't care about the meta AI. She don't care about the look and see. None of that phases her, right? I told her and she's like, mm, yeah, cool. The thing that has her giddy with these glasses is that they have a camera and you can quickly take a photo. You can quickly take a video within seconds of something happening. And I can definitely confirm that taking videos and photos with these glasses are just so fast, so much faster than using a phone or these action cams. But I like these glasses and uh, be on the lookout for B-roll footage coming straight from these glasses in my future video. Anyway, that does it for this video. If you found it helpful, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, I'll take thumbs down. My name is Z. Subscribe for more videos like these. As always, hasta luego muchachos. 
I'll catch you in the next one. Later.